In this video, I'm reviewing the Simplicity 8509 Swing Coat. Please join me. Hello and welcome to Sewing Seams with Deb. I'm Deb and this is my channel All Things Sewing and uh, Knitting and Other Things. And today, um, or in this video, um, I'm looking at the 8509 Simplicity 1950s Vintage Pattern and um, the, the short version of the swing coat that I made. And um, I, so I'm just going to talk you through what worked and what didn't work for me. So I found this to be a really simple pattern with a few new techniques that I haven't done before. Um, the pattern itself is a uh, rewritten vintage pattern. You see the original one there. Um, and they've redrafted it to be more uh, modern day. So I did version B, which is the short, the shortened coat and the three quarter length sleeves. I did not turn the cuffs up though. So I'll just show you this short video, which shows me wearing the, um, the finished garment. And you'll see that it's got bound buttonholes. Uh, it's got three buttons, although I only do up two of them mostly. Um, and uh, it doesn't hang as well at the back as I would like. I'm not exactly sure what I could have done to rectify that. Um, the pockets turned out amazing, the welt pockets. So I'm very, very happy with that. I'm very happy with the alignment of the pattern, the pattern matching. I feel that that worked out really, really well, which I'll go into a little bit more. And uh, so overall, and the lining, the lining's a bit of a, it sort of matches, but it um, it's just a lining that I bought from a uh, Indigo um, shop in Melbourne last year. Uh, I made this pattern in, sorry, I made this garment in 2022, so last year. I really took my time. It, I remember that it took me about a month in between other things. So I just did a little bit by little bit. Um, it's actually a wool mix and I bought the fabric from Spotlight. So the Spotlight fabric was on special the winter before, at the end of the winter. So I bought that and some other, which I've still got uh, and that I haven't used yet. But you, you might have noticed in the shops that this um, type of tartan fabric is really in this season. So I'm a little bit before my time. So I'm really pleased about that. So I did do a sample of the buttonhole, which I've got here in my little booklet and I've kept the sample. So the bound buttonhole, I had a practice of that. Um, when I did the final garment, I changed a couple of things. Um, when I uh, did the welt pocket and the bound buttonholes around the edges, I used the inside of the fabric, which is the rougher side. So one side is rough and one side is smooth. Smooth and fluffy. So I couldn't work out which was the right side and which was the wrong side. So I decided to go with the, the fluffy side is on the outside. Um, and so when I did my practice of my buttonhole, I, I did it all in the same right side facing, uh, facing out. So when I decided that I would do it slightly different on the actual coat. So um, one moment, please. I'll just get it down and show you. Just referring to my notes again, um, and the pattern, um, working out my sizing according to the pattern, I um, I fall under the size 14, the 36 bust, and the waist 28, that's inches. However, I did my first 12, just in cotton, because I really wanted it for sizing. And it was way too big. I didn't like the way it hung at all. And I know swing coats are meant to be a bit bigger. Uh, so uh, I decided to size down and I did the measuring of the, of the pattern and how much um, ease there is and so on. 
and I ended up redoing a full toile and I did it in a size 10. So I went down to a size 10, which has the 32 and a half inch bust and a 29 inch waist. Well, it's a long time since my waist was 29 inches. But as you can see uh, on the finished garment, it doesn't really matter what size my waist was. It was all about the upper body measurements. Um, and what I didn't really think about ahead of time was the button placements. So there's, as I said, there's three buttons, but I only do up two. And most of the time I only do up the bottom one. So what I wished I had have done was take more notice of the location of the buttons because I would have dropped them down by about four inches total. And then that would have been much um, more aligned with my um, the depth of my body or the length of my body. Never mind. Um, I'm very happy with it. I get a lot of compliments about it. I'm really, really comfortable with it. It goes with so many things in my in my closet, that in my uh, wardrobe, that I'm very, very happy with it. So um, just an up-close picture. The, um, I just wanted to show you the collar turned out beautifully. I was just so... I was loving myself sick with this. Uh, I really, really, really took my time. As I said, it took me a month, um, you know, working and all that as well. Um, but just in the daylight hours, because it's dark, blue I didn't want to try and work at night on it but check out this pattern matching on the collar how good is it on both sides very pleased with that and right down to the sleeves so the uh, that's what I wanted to show you the buttons and I did show you these on the twirl. You see the buttonholes? How it's got the, you might not be able to see that very well. The furry bit is on that uh, right side. And then I've got the non-furry side as the binding. Just there. You might not be able to see it. You can kind of see it when you've got it in front of you. And you might be able to see it better on the actual pocket. Again, here's the pocket. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> so there's one of the pockets. Sorry, kept moving it. There's one of the pockets. And you see it's not furry, so it, it sort of stands out a tiny bit, the opening. And the um, there's the inside there. I'm oh, very pleased with this coat. Um, the lining was really good. I didn't, I've, I've never really made a coat before and I didn't quite know how to finish off the bottom. So um, I've got a lot more to learn, but um, it's very heavy. It's very heavy, but it's it's fabulous. I'm very, very happy with it and overall. Um, and yeah, what would I do different next time? I would definitely change the buttons lower. I would probably look into more detail about how to finish the lining at the bottom of the coat because I'm not happy with the way it actually looks. I'll show you again. I'll put the twirl up again and show you what I mean. Um, the uh, the old, An alternative could be that I could extend the sleeves. Um, I don't mind the sleeves being, I kind of ended up being seven eighths length. They're not really elbow length and not really, certainly not wrist length. They're more seven eighths. So um, I think it turned out really well. I'm really pleased with it. It's very cosy. It's perfect for Perth weather. Uh, we don't really need long coats here. Um, this is the most thickness, I guess, that we would ever need. So I'll probably make this again. Um, not sure what I'll make it out of yet. I've got some other ideas in my mind. Um, and uh, But I'll see how I go with that. So thank you for watching and thank you for um, liking... Um, and putting a thumbs up if you like the video. If you would like me to do more um, of these type of videos where I do a, um, a review of a pattern that I've made, please let me know because I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I do have a lot of notes about all of this. I've covered most of the notes. Um, what I've noticed was a lot of the notes were how to do the welt pocket.
I even wrote it all down because I thought I really need to be across it all, how to do it. So, um, okay, so that's that's it for today. So thank you for joining me um, and I shall talk to you next time. Happy sewing. Stay well. Bye for now. Bye.